Hello everybody, my name is Marlo and today I'm going to show you how to build this Japanese style house inside of Minecraft which also functions as a survival base. It has multiple features that would be helpful in a survival situation. Downstairs is the functional aspect of this house and upstairs is a nice cozy bedroom. If you're building this in survival I'd recommend taking a look at the description down below for a full materials list on all of the items that we're going to be needing in today's build. Once you've found an area to build in, the first thing you can do is make a 15 by 15 square out of stone brick blocks and you also need to make that square two blocks high. The next step is to add in three more square rings on that top block just as I'm doing here and when you're all done you should have a platform that looks like this. You'll know you have the right size platform when all of these sides are seven blocks long. So just go ahead and measure that before you go any further. You can also go ahead and slap a torch in the center of this platform here just to stop any spiders from spawning underneath. The next thing to do is to locate the front of the house. So come to whichever side of the platform that's going to be for you and break away these six blocks in the center. So there should be six blocks on either side. We're going to place down three stairs at the bottom, break away those three blocks and replace them with some more stairs. The next thing to do is to mix in the other stone blocks that we're using. So the cracked stone bricks, the regular stone, as well as the andesite. Now there isn't any particular way to do this exactly. However, what I'm trying to do here is still mix in the other three blocks, but keep it so that stone brick is still the most frequent. Having said that, it doesn't really matter. All we're trying to achieve here is a nice bit of texture. So mix them in however you want, really. With the stone part of the platform now finished, we're going to start work on the railing, which is going to start by placing a cobbled deep slate wall in all four corners of this platform here, and then we're going to place a lantern on top of all of those. This will stop mob spawning up on the platform here because it will get it to a sufficient light level. What we then need to do, on all of these cobbled deep slate walls, on either side we're going to place down four spruce fence gates, so that's one corner, just like that, do that three more times. And with that all done, what we can then do is place another cobbled deep slate wall next to the edge of all of these fence gates so that when you're all done, it should look something a little bit like this. And you'll notice we have three blocks in between all of these. We're going to leave the entranceway open, of course, but on the other three, we just want to add three fence gates in between all of those. The last thing we need to do is place a string on top of all of these walls that look like this, very, very flat. We want it to look like this instead. And we're using the string because it's completely invisible, but does change how the wall actually looks. There are other blocks you could use, but I think string does a nice job of this. Go ahead and grab some of your dark oak logs and from each of these corner blocks here, so right next to where we have this gap in the middle, we're just going to place one of those down like that and we want these to be five blocks high. So we're going to add an additional four on top of all of those. So we should end up with four pillars that are all five blocks high, just as I have here. The next thing we can do is pick one of the sides here. I'm going to start out the front and grab some dark oak slabs and we're going to place them on the top block here on the bottom half of it, just like that. And if we do that on both sides, so you should see half a block at the top there, we're going to bring another one in towards each other and then have a dark oak trap door underneath. Mine look a little bit different. It's just a custom resource pack tweak I've made. Yours are fine the way they are. It'll look pretty much exactly the same. We're then going to crouch and place another slab next to those trap doors, just like that. Then we're going to grab some temporary blocks and we're just going to place one in the middle here, like I've done there. And we're going to place a slab on the bottom part of the block, remove the temporary block and place another one just like that. This can then be copied round to the other three sides. Now we're going to come around to the front of the build here, so the entranceway where we have this staircase, and we're going to start by grabbing some strip dark oak logs and adding four of those in one block away from the corner pillars here, just like that. On the one wide sections, we're going to have a smooth sandstone stair at the bottom and an upside down one at the top with two oak trap doors in the middle here to serve as windows, just like that. As for the middle section here, we're going to start with some upside down stairs facing into each other in the top corners, a spruce trap door in the middle and then two here on either side flapped up so that we have this archway shape. 
and then we just want to step inside for this next step and we're going to have three smooth sandstone blocks just next to all of these that I'm placing and then making sure you're actually inside when you place this we want to have a smooth sandstone stair upside down in the middle here so it should be facing into us rather than to the outside. We also want to go ahead and just place any stone block here in the center because on top of it we need to place down our birch door. And the final step for this clip is to add a lantern here in the center underneath that dark oak slab. Now we're going to come around the back of the build here and do a very similar thing starting off with those stripped dark oak logs and the one wide blocks are going to be the same around the front so those two sandstone stairs with the two trap doors in the middle just get that identically around the back too so we should have this at the moment. Whilst we're thinking about it we may as well actually place the lantern here in the center. As for the next step, once again, very similar as to what we have around the front. We're going to start off with two upside down spruce stairs on the top blocks, but we also want two regular stairs on the bottom here. We're then going to add a spruce trap door on the bottom block, on the top block, and then on the two sides so we get this circular shape. And then we just want to step inside real quick and we're going to have three smooth sandstone blocks just as we did around the front as well. Then we actually want to step back outside here and we're going to have an upside down stair here, a regular stair at the bottom and an oak trap door in the middle. So that's how the back looks. As for the other two sides here, the first thing we're going to do is place some strip dark oak logs in the center, four of them just like that so there should be three blocks either side. Then we're going to get a barrel and we're going to place that in the center of these gaps with three strip dark oak logs on top of both of those. Of course crouch when you place it on the barrel to begin with otherwise you're just going to open it up like so. So we want to have something like this. Then we're going to do the same as to what we've done on the other sides. Have a sandstone stair at the bottom and the top of these outer blocks with the oak trap doors in the middle here just like that. As for the central spot here, we're going to go ahead and place our lantern once again and then we're going to grab some spruce stairs and we're going to place a regular one next to the barrel here facing into the center and then do the opposite at the top for the upside down blocks. And then we just want to go ahead and place a spruce trap door on the side there. So we have this at the moment. The final touch is to come inside here and we're going to grab some acacia trap doors and we're just going to place three of those down like that. Flip them all up so that it should look like this from the inside and like this from the outside. And you can now copy this, everything we've done here in this clip, round to the opposite side over here because they are completely identical. With the other side all done, the next thing to do is to come to the corners here next to these logs and we're going to have a cobbled deep slate wall either side on the bottom and three dark oak fences on top. And we want to do that for all four corners as you can see I've already done that here. Now we can go ahead and finish up the roof for this bottom level here. It's of course not going to be staying like this. So we need to come to any of the sides. It doesn't matter because they're all going to be the same. And we're going to place a temporary block here in the middle in front of that slab. Either side of that temp block we're going to add a slab on the top half of the block. And then replace that middle one with another slab. We can then grab some dark oak trap doors and we're going to stick one on top of the outer slab and one in front of it so it should look like this and we want to do that for both of the sides so we have this at the moment. We're then going to grab some temporary blocks and place them on top of the outer trap door blocks with some upside down dark oak stairs on the side of them. We can then grab some dark oak slabs and replace the temporary blocks with the said slabs and then grab two more and have them next to these upside down stairs. Then we're going to grab some more trap doors and have another in front and on top for both of the sides here. So two over here too. And then lastly we're going to grab some dark oak stairs and we're going to place two of them down just like that facing into each other. So this is what we've just done here. You can then copy that round to the other three sides and we'll finish it up afterwards. <laughs> With all of the sides to the roof outline done, the final touches we need to make are on the corners here. So we're going to place a dark oak slab next to those dark oak trap doors just to fill in that gap 
and then we're going to have a slab at the top part of this stair with another one on top of that. So just three slabs as I've just placed there for all four corners. So now we can fill in this section of the roof with our cobble deep slate and the first thing we're going to do is come to the middle section of all of these sides where we have these two trap doors in the middle and we're just going to have three slabs just as I'm placing them down like so. Just like that. What we can then do behind those slabs is place down three cobbled deep slate stairs facing into them. So just as I'm placing here, not backwards or anything like that, we want them facing forwards. So just place them in the exact same way on all four sides. With that done for all four sides, we can go ahead and place a slab next to that back stair and then one more just in front of it. And of course, we want to do that four more times for all four sides. And with that done, the next step is to come to the corners here that we have left open and we're going to have a slab next to those two stairs, one on top of the log, two either side of that slab and then one next to both of these trap doors and another one here. So we kind of have this shape for the corner and you can go ahead and do that for the other three too as I've already done. So that's the bottom section of the house all done. We're now ready to move up to the top part here and we're going to start by placing some dark oak logs once again in all four of the corners. So I'm going to recommend you just place a temporary block here and then a log on top. Get rid of the temporary block and place one below. So we have two logs there. We want to place down three more so we have five in total. Then we can come to the outside here, just stand on top of the roof. And on this block, we're going to add in two spruce signs, miss a block, place down two more spruce signs here. So this is one of the pillars. We want to do the same here, here and here in the other three corners. With all of the pillars in position, we then want to add in our roof outline. So we're going to start at one of the sides here and we're going to have an upside down stair facing outwards on the top block with a dark oak trap door on top of that stair. Then we can have a dark oak slab on the back of it on the bottom half of the block with a dark oak trap door here and then underneath that slab, same again over on this side. Then underneath these two trap doors, we're going to have two dark oak slabs and then an upside down dark oak stair in the center. You can go ahead and do this three more times and we'll do the finishing touches afterwards. With all four sides done, the last thing we need to do is place down a dark oak trap door next to these two upside down stairs with a full dark oak plank on top of it. And we want to do that for all three of the corners so we get those nice little flicks that is very common in Japanese architecture. So there we go, that's the roof outline done for this section. We do have some more to do later but for right now all we're going to do is come to the front of the building here. And we're going to place down a spruce slab next to those two dark oak trap doors and a spruce trap door in the middle. We can then do the same around the back here. So two slabs and a trap door. Then we want to grab our smooth sandstone and we're going to place one back behind the spruce slab and another one on top of it for both of the sides here. And we're going to have a smooth sandstone block slab that is at the bottom and one more at the top. So we get two gaps here for some windows. And now coming to the front or the back, they're both going to be the same. We're going to place down a dark oak plank next to this log, just like that, and then a slab on top of the log itself. So same again over on the other side. Then we're going to have a regular stair facing outwards on both of the sides, just like that. Then an upside down off the back of those, another regular stair on top of both of those, and then one more upside down here in the middle, just to get this staircase archway shape for the very center. We also want to have a stair facing back into the middle with an upside down one just coming off the front. And very quickly, let's just do that round the back here. So as you can see, we have the same shape. All that's left to do is go ahead and from the back of this stair on the bottom of the block, we're just going to add a line of five slabs going across and connecting to the other side. As for filling in the roof, we're going to start by placing down a slab here and here next to the top of that log and then we're just going to come around the back and we're going to add three across the bottom here just like that. Then we want to have a full block here next to the sandstone blocks and just come down underneath and add in a couple deep slate slab. Then whilst we're back here, we just want to add in three upside down stairs in the middle just like that. 
And then on top of all of these blocks, we're going to have a line of regular cobbled deep slate stairs facing outwards and then same again on top. So this is what one of the sides looks like. Very quickly, we can do it around the back here, maybe in reverse this time. So two lines of the regular stairs, just like so. Then we're going to have a slab, a slab, hop underneath, and we're going to have a full block, a full block, two slabs, three upside down stairs, and then lastly, three more slabs in the middle. Once we've got our cobbled deep slate on hand, we're just going to go to the inside here and add a line of three upside down deep slate stairs, just like that next to the sandstone, and then three more slabs across the top here to complete the ceiling. Now we're going to come around to the front of the build here and finish this wall. So what we're going to do is place down two stairs next to the logs at the bottom and two more upside down stairs at the top. In between both of those we can have some acacia trap doors flipped upwards for some windows. Then we can go ahead and place down a temporary block here and here and on top of those we're just going to have four strip dark oak logs just like that to act as some pillars. Then in the middle here we can have two smooth sandstone stairs, one regular and one upside down with an oak trap door in the middle. Now moving on round to the left or the right hand side, we're going to come to the centre here, place down a temporary block, then four strip dark oak logs on top of it, just like that. Then we want to place down some barrels, but before that we're going to place down some trap doors. So we're going to place two here next to the log here in the centre, flip them open so it should be just below this stair. And we're going to do the same on the logs here, the regular logs, not the stripped kinds. So we have something like this. And now we're going to place down some barrels, but we don't just want to place them down willy-nilly in any shape or variation. We actually want the underside texture, which looks like this. So to place the ones on the bottom, we're going to go underneath here and just crouch and place it under the trap door, just like so, so that when we can actually see the top, it looks like this, which looks a little bit better than that, in my opinion. More decorative as opposed to functional. We don't really want to see this as an actual barrel, more so just a building block. Now we do need two more up here. These are a bit more finicky to place, so I'd recommend just temporarily breaking these four deep slate slabs. And then if we just come up here and place them on top of the trap doors, just like so, as you can see, we can see the underside texture on all of these. And then super quick, we're just going to go ahead and replace those slabs. What you can do now is copy this with the barrels round to the opposite side over here. And you want to copy what we did round the front of the build round to the back of the build. And with that all done, we are finished with the exterior of the house. It's time to head inside and start work on the interior. So currently we don't even have a floor to stand on, so I think that should be the first thing we sort out. However, the enchanting setup as well as some furnaces are kind of incorporated into the floor, so we have to do that at the same time. The first thing we're going to do is replace this torch in the center here with any block, it doesn't matter what we're going to pick. And we just want to surround that block with some furnaces all facing the same direction, just like that. Now we do want to light up down here because we really don't want the mob spawning so I'd recommend you just place a torch here in all four of the corners. That will be more than enough to stop spiders from crawling around down here. So with all of that lit up we can now go ahead and place the enchanting table in the center here and what we're going to do is place down three bookshelves here and then bring that all the way around so that we place down 15 bookshelves in total, leaving us with this corner block empty. You can make it a bookshelf or you could just make it an oak plank. It will have the exact same effect. You only need 15 bookshelves for 30 levels. So with the enchanting setup done, as well as the furnaces, all that's left to do is just fill in the remaining blocks that we can see through underneath with some oak planks or oak slabs if you want to save on resources. And lastly, we just want to replace this stone block with an oak plank itself and replace our birch door back down. Before we go any further, we do want to get a little bit of light in here. So that's mostly going to be coming from a lantern on top of a crafting table here, just on one of the sides in between the acacia trap doors. So go ahead and get that down so we can get some light levels into here. Now the next thing we're going to do is place a stone cutter in between the opposite acacia trap doors. Just very helpful blocks to have around in survival. Next up, we're going to grab some spruce planks and we're going to place two here next to the logs above the acacia trap doors, just like that. 
And the next thing we're going to do is grab some spruce trap doors, three of them, and we're going to add them on the sides of all of these sandstone blocks, just as I'm doing here. So three of them all flipped up to the side of the block, just like that. Then, on top of those trap doors, next to these logs here, we're going to place down some upside down spruce stairs, just like that. So four of those in total. And then along this line here, we're just going to have some spruce slabs on both of the sides, just like that. So when we're all done with this step, it should look like this. The spruce trap doors, the stairs, and then the line of slabs. Now we're just going to grab some stripped dark oak wood, which is the same as the stripped dark oak log, but without this top texture. So we want to grab three of those. And next to the window here where we have the single oak trap door, opposite the birch doorway, we're just going to add three of them down like that. Then we can turn around above the doorway here and we're just going to place down five temporary blocks like this. They're going to be covered up so you won't be able to see them. And what we're going to do on the two outer blocks here, we're going to place down some stripped birch logs all connected facing the same way. Same again over here on this side. And then in the middle row, we're going to have three of those and then we're going to have a strip birch wood so that we're not going to be able to see that top texture, which as you can see, looks a whole lot better. Above the entranceway here, we're going to have a cartography table, loom and smithing table. All very helpful blocks to have on hand in survival, but they don't always look that good. So we're just going to cover them up with some spruce trap doors. Then if you need them, you just unfold the trap doors. You still have access to them all. And when you're done, you just cover them back up. On the opposite side, we're going to do a similar thing with the grindstone and the anvil. So they're going to go on either side here and here, just like that. We also want to place down a spruce plank behind them. But in the center here, we're going to have a ladder to go up to the second level. So we just want to place a strip dark oak log underneath that block. And we do just want to go ahead and cover up those blocks just like that. And same trick as what we did before. Just unfold them if you want to use them. And we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, and six ladders to go up to the second level. Now, slight problem if you don't play on Java Edition. I don't believe this is a possibility, putting ladders on the back of trap doors. It may have changed since last time I got told about this, but if this doesn't work, I'm sure you could find a way to weave your way around this. You could do something like that, for instance doesn't look great but it works you could get rid of the trap door just replace it with a full block there's ways to work around it but you may be able to by now i'm not entirely sure as i said i only play java edition not bedrock the last thing to add to the bottom level here is some storage so all we're gonna do is add in three double chests here in each of the corners just like that so place in the chest then just click on the side of the chest crouching whilst you do it so there we go 12 double chests in total that should be more than enough storage and if you want this is optional you can just go ahead and slap an item frame here if you want to label what's inside of them but that is entirely up to you with the bottom level done we're now ready to head up the ladder to the top floor here which is going to be the bedroom with a couple of other helpful items so the first thing we're going to do is add some light it's very dark up here so just stick a chain in the center with a lantern hanging down from below in fact we're going to go ahead and add two chains get that lantern a little bit lower then we can grab some smooth sandstone and underneath these spruce trap doors we're just going to place one of those in either side and then underneath these three sandstone blocks we're just going to cover those up with some spruce trap doors so if we position ourselves on the ladder here we're going to face this wall and look to the right hand side next to this barrel and place down a crafting table with a jukebox just beside it an ender chest over here in this corner then a bed the color can be your choosing just beside it on top of the crafting table, we're going to have a flower pot with something inside. And on this block right here, we're going to have a bell because, well, why not? Just to the other side of the ladder here, we're going to have a smoker, then a blast furnace, and then two looms. However, we don't want to be able to see the front facing texture. We want to be able to see the back and sides. So we're just going to face the bell and place down two of them like that. And as you can see, it kind of looks like a set of drawers, maybe, perhaps. Got to use your imagination a little bit. This maybe is too much drawers, too many handles and whatnot. So we're just going to go ahead and cover it up with a painting. I would like my tree. There we go. On top of the looms, we don't really want to see the top texture of that. So we're just going to stick a birch trap door on top of that one. We can have a chest here in the corner. And then lastly, we're just going to have another flower pot on top of the blast furnace. 
Above these two oak trap doors, we would like some paintings, just one by one. So to the right hand side, we're just going to place a temporary block and then you can cycle through until you get the painting that you want. I think that will do just fine for me. And the very last thing we're going to do is add in an armor stand. So start by placing it on the diagonal here on that block right there. Go ahead and equip it with whatever you want. I'm using gold armor. Maybe it can be some sort of really fancy samurai armor <laughs> if we're pretending that sort of thing. We're gonna go ahead and hook it with a fishing rod and that's because I kinda wanna move it into this spot instead of just having it secluded to this one block that it's currently on. So you can actually move armor stands with fishing rods if you just go ahead and hook it and then get real close maybe just stand on this block right here give it a little yank and as you can see it moved forward a tiny bit maybe you want to budget a slight bit further forward so you stand even closer to it give it another tug and there we go i'm pretty happy with how that looks positional wise so there we go everybody, that's going to do it for today's tutorial. I really hope you've enjoyed watching, thank you ever so much for doing that, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.